All right, how you guys doing today? We're taking a look at section 5.3, which is using angle bisectors. But first, our joke of the day. What do you have to know in order to get top grades in geometry? The solution will be revealed at the end of this. Now, the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the angle bisector theorem. Now, the angle bisector theorem states, if a point is on the bisector of an angle, then it is equidistant from the two sides. So if we have a picture that starts out like this, what we're going to do is notice how instead of just this picture, we're going to have this picture. This is going to be our conclusion. So if we take a look at where this angle is right here, and angle BAD and angle CAD, then the sides opposite them, so that's going to be over here. These two sides, well, they're going to be the same thing, and we can see that because of the way that it's marked in our diagram. But that's not the only thing that's true. The angle bisector theorem also has its own converse, and that just says if a point is on the interior of an angle, and it's equidistant from the size of the angle, then it lies in the bisector of the angle. So what that's going to tell you is that if you see this piece right here, like BD is going to be the same thing as DC, then that means angle BAD is going to be the same angle as angle CAD. All right, and that's really a lot to, to kind of put into a lot of words, but picture is worth a thousand words. So if you see a picture like that, you guys will know what to do. All right, let's take a look at our first couple of examples. Now check this out. This is going to be pretty straightforward. Find the measure of angle GFJ. So GFJ, I want to know this angle right here. GFJ. Well, if I take a look at HJ and the length of segment GH, both of those are 7, which means that the angles that are here and here, both of those angles have to be the same. So GFG, or GFJ, that angle, is going to have a measurement of 42 degrees. But now every once in a while, and this is where you really have to be careful, sometimes instead of asking just for the measure of angle GFG, you might be asked, hey, come on, what's the measure of angle GFH? All right, instead of just one of the interior angles. And even though you might be given just that angle 42 right there, you're going to have to make sure that you double that to come up with 84 degrees for that angle. So that's just another piece that you might see. Sometimes you'll get asked that for this type of problem. All right, now let's take a look at our second, third, and fourth example. I think you guys are pretty much going to fly through this because this is pretty easy. Now, if you think you know how to do these and solve these, like set up an equation, solve them, and go through all that stuff, you go ahead and do that on your own. And when you're done, hit pause and see how you did with this. If not, that's cool. Just hang out, and I'll take you through it step by step. Now, in this first one, we see that both of these are 27 degrees. So that means the side that's 15 and the side that's x, well, they're both going to be the same. Booyah. Done. Thanks very much for playing. Now, same thing on the other side. We've got these segment marks that are congruent so that means it's 3x plus 5 piece is going to be equal to 4x minus 6 and again just do the arithmetic take your time now if I subtract 3x I'll get 1x but I'm going to be lazy I'm going to leave out that 1 because we don't usually write that in, in math and then you add the 6 over and you get 11 for the value of x booyah done with that now under example 4 again we see these angles right in here are both the same so that means these sides across from them, bang, bang, both of those, well, they'll be equal to. So we just set 5x equal to 6x minus 5. We subtract 6x. Now, be careful here because you'll get negative x or negative 1x equals negative 5. And the reason I wrote the negative 1 is just so algebraically you don't forget. you got to get x to be positive. So divide both sides or multiply both sides by negative 1, and you will get positive 5 for the value of x. That's it. Piece of cake, huh? Yeah, I thought you'd find that pretty easy. Now this next part can get a little bit more complicated, so let's get after this one together. Let's check it. We've got this really fancy thing called the concurrency of angle bisectors of a triangle. What? That's just asking us. It says, hey, the angles 
bisectors of a triangle, they intersect at this really cool point that's equidistant from the side of the triangle. So if we take a look at our diagram, we can tell that, like that all happens at point P. But here's what I want you to really focus on right here. Is this word equidistant? Now, equidistant from the sides of the triangle. So when I take a look at the sides of the triangle, from P to here, P to here, and P to there, all that distance is going to be the same, yo. So when you got the angle bisectors going on, that's what's going to happen there. That point of concurrency P from P to each one of those sides, bam, that's going to be the same. Now, a little technical stuff too, because we know that's the angle bisectors. We're going to know that this angle up in here, beep, is going to be the same thing as this angle up in here. So don't forget about that. This guy down here where angle C, that's going to get split in half too. And then so is angle A over here. But when you mark your diagram, make sure you use different congruent marks for it because each one of those angles are different. Now, we're going to give this thing a very special name. This point of concurrency where, where that all happens at is this word called in center. So the point of concurrency of three angle bisectors of a triangle is called the in center of a triangle. The in center is always inside the triangle. So don't forget about that. Where point P is in our diagram, yeah, that's our in center. So a little bit about that vocabulary word because you're going to need to recognize that word is going to set up this picture right here. So make sure you know that. All right, in center, inside. Look at all the stuff that's going to be equal. So let's go ahead and make sure, don't forget, let's write that equal equation that we would have for that. PF would be the same thing as PD, which would be the same thing as PE. And I'm not talking about your phys ed class. All right, all those segments would be equal. That's going to be the key stuff for this one. Now let's go ahead and play around with one of these because you'll we're going to use not only this information, but we're going to bring back an old friend of ours to help us out here in a little bit too. All right, so here we go. We've got our example here where it says N is the in center of, of triangle ABC, find N, D, R. All right, so it's the in center. So first thing I want to do is mark all of those pieces that are going to be the same. So from here to here, here to here, and here to here. Now notice that's where those right angles are. So that's another way you can kind of help remember that too. So we've got to find however long ND is. Now where's ND at? Oh man, I don't know what ND is. But here's what we're going to do to get after this one. Check it. We're going to take a look at this triangle right here. This triangle A and F. We're going to take a look at that guy. That triangle, if we can figure out how long the NF part is, then we'll be able to know how long ND is because that's going to be the same length as NF. So that's pretty cool. So let's kind of play around with this here a little bit. Now, remember that old friend I was talking to you about? Yeah, that's right. We're going to be using Pythagoras, yo. So we're going to bust this out. Check it. We're going to have segment A is right here, F is right here, and we got N right here. And we got a right triangle. Here's 20 on this part. The AF is 16. NF, we don't know what that is, but we do know that is a leg of the right triangle. So we're going to go ahead and set up the Pythagorean theorem, yo. Remember what that is? Here it is in case you forgot. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now, you just got to make sure you plug the right numbers in the right spots. Now for A squared, it doesn't matter if we use 16 or NF, we're just going to use one of the legs. I'm going to write NF in there right now. Now NF squared plus 16 squared, that's going to equal 20 squared. Now hopefully you know your math facts, yo, because NF squared, we don't know, but 16 squared, yeah, that's 256. And 20 squared, yeah, that's 400. Now, you got that down, no big deal. So NF squared, that's going to give us 400 minus 256, Whoa, that's 144. Check out that quick math. Oh, but we're not done yet because NF is squared, so we got to separate it and get it to be by itself. So we're going to square root 144. Now, remember in geometry, we're only dealing with a positive square root. If you're in an algebra class, you would do plus or minus in front of that. But we're only dealing with positive because we're dealing with distance. So the square root of 144, yeah, you better know what that is too. Those math facts are coming in all over the place. They're coming right at you. Square root of 144, that's 12. Now, we got NF, but I needed to find out how much ND was. So NF is 12, but ND, ooh, that'd be the same thing. ND would be 12 too. So we got how much ND is. Thank you very much, Pythagoras. You're one of my best friends, man. I'm going to use you all the time in this course. All right, so that's all you got to do for that one. Now, next example, I'm gonna, I bet you guys could probably do that on your own if you follow all that. Same idea. Mark your diagram, take your time, and see what you got to do. So we're going to take the same kind of idea in the previous example, but we're giving 
neither one of those pieces, but BF and BN. We gotta figure out what ND is. So BF, all right, so BF, that's over here. And that's gonna be, what, 12? So we just write 12 in there. From N to B, that whole thing is 13. So we're just gonna write that in there. Now, again, man, we're gonna deal with this triangle right here. Ooh, 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 that triangle right there is the one that we've gotta deal with. Now, what are the parts that are the same? And we, we gotta mark those pieces that are the same. This part's the same. EN is the same, and so is ND. Which one do I gotta find? I gotta find ND. Now, ND I don't know, but if I can find NF, well, then I can figure out how much ND is. Same idea as before. Use your friend Pythagoras, go ahead and get after that, and see what you got. When you're ready, go ahead and pause the video, work it out, and when you're done, unpause it, see if you got it right. All right, so how'd you do? Do you end up with ND being five? Make sure your work is shown just like that, because when I look at your work, you've got to have some work to back up your equation. Now, here's a shortcut I'm going to show you guys to help you out, because I want you to make sure that when you do your work algebraically, you know you got it right, because you got some mad math skills. Now, we're going to talk about this thing called Pythagorean triples. Now, Pythagorean triples, they're going to represent three pairs of numbers that if you have these things memorized, kind of like your times tables, if you know 4 times 5 is 20, you don't have to think about that. Pythagorean triples, same idea. I'm going to give you the big three. The big three Pythagorean theorem triples are 3, 4, 5. Next one, 6, 8, 10. And then the next one is 5, 12, 13. These are the big three Pythagorean triples. Now, what you can do with Pythagorean triples, if you know two of the sides of a right triangle are two of the numbers that are in the triple, man, you don't even have to think too much. Just go, oh, 5, 12, 13 triangle, because check out our sides for the triangle NFB. We have one side was 12, hypotenuse was 13, so that means that's going to be that last one there, that 5, 12, 13 triangle, which is what we got for NF when we found that missing side. So Pythagorean triples are going to be, if you have those memorized, that's going to help make your life a lot easier. So one other thing to put in that memory bank of yours. Make sure you get those three memorized, because those you'll see again very, very soon. Now that wraps it up for today's lesson. So hopefully you did all right with all that stuff. Now, thanks for watching using angle bisectors. Now don't forget, man, what do you need to know in order to get top grades in geometry? You got to get all the angles. You got to know them all. All right, so peace out. You guys have a good day, and I'll catch up with you soon. Don't forget, make sure you do your survey. Do it now. Peace.